Jeremiah, 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 chapter number one, you'll find a verse of scripture. It says something like this around verse number five. God is talking to Jeremiah and he tells him, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. It's in your Bible. You need to check that out. Jer Jeremiah chapter number one. Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And I ordained you and sanctified you to be a prophet to the nations. Wow, that's an amazing statement. Because what God is telling Jeremiah that before you showed up on a sonogram, before you even formed muscles and tissues and bones, God says, I knew you. Now, why is that important? Because the only way for God to know you before you was formed means that before you were formed, you had to have been with God. Which means, men, listen to me. You are not the product of your mama and daddy getting together on a lonely night. You are the product of God Almighty who created you in his image and his likeness. And before you were ever born, God already knew what you would do. He knew how you would do it. He knew when you would do it. And before God even released you into the earth, he says, I already knew who you were. And so what life is about, life is about finding what I was born for. Because if you don't know what you're born for, you'll never know what to live for. Yeah, you got me, you got me. Anybody feeling me over here? You understand what I'm saying? See, see, you got to know this. You, you got to know what I was born for so that I know what to live for. That's why identity is important. And the only one that can give you that answer is God. Which means he is the only one that can unlock your DNA on the inside of you. He knows what you were created for. The question is, do you know who you are? Because he told Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I already created you to be a prophet. Wow. That means that God has determined my purpose before he created me. And I am only created to carry out his purpose. So if I don't know what I'm born for, I don't know what to live for. Who am I? It is possible that tonight you sit with two yous in you. The you that you are and the you you're supposed to be. Which one tonight are you ready to step into? Because, because listen to me, brothers, listen to me now. I, I, tonight I came as your brother. Listen to me. The only way you can get caught up and mixed up and wrapped up in some of the stuff we were wrapped up in the only way you can do that is there had to be a disconnect from God. And so when you don't know yourself, you search for yourself. Trying to find yourself. But without God, you end up losing yourself. That's what happens. Now we back to the prodigal son. Yeah, he was sitting in the house with the father. God had blessed and done everything great for him. The father had provided a great lifestyle for him. He's an heir. He ain't doing nothing. He's not working. He's not a slave. He's a son. 
And he says, as a son, you've given me an inheritance. Give me my stuff. I want to go out on my own and do my own thing. He disconnects himself from the father thinking that he can keep his identity without being attached to the source, which is God. Men, listen to me when I tell you, God created you in such a way that you have to stay connected to him in order to function right. Everything God created, he created this way. If you take the fish, God created the fish, and where did he drop the fish? He dropped it in water. So as long as the fish is in the water, it lives, it stays alive, it functions properly. But the moment you disconnect the fish from the environment that it was created in and pull it out of the water on the bank, it begins to die and gasp and suffocate. Why? Because God created everything where it has to be connected to its source in order to survive. And when God created you, he connected you to him. So guess what happens if you disconnect yourself from him? Like a fish out of water, you're going to die. You're going to malfunction. You're going to do what I call stupid stuff. Stupid, stupid stuff. It ain't hard. I understand because I've been stupid a time or two in my life because anything you do from God, you start morphing into stupid stuff. Paul said it like this, the apostle Paul. He said, when I was a child, <laughs> he said, I spake as a child. I, I, I thought I understood. Watch this. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Which means, he says, I have to grow out of certain stuff. My God in heaven. Which means what God wants to do is God wants to give you a revelation of who he is. So that he can give you a revelation of who you are. So that you can stay connected to your identity. So that you don't get trapped in what I call stolen identity. Which means, if you don't get your identity from God, who you going to get it from? Who? 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 If you're not going to serve God, who you going to serve? And that's what you don't understand, men, is that Satan came after you. You were too caught up doing what you were doing and having fun and, 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 you know, doing your thing. You didn't understand that you had fallen in the trap of the enemy. And his, his assignment is to steal your identity. Your identity was created in Genesis. Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Which means you were created to be in the image of the Father. That means every man born was born to carry the image of God. Woo, man. Once you understand that, once you understand that I was created to bear the image of God, nothing could ever cause you to have low self-esteem. Nothing could ever cause you to search for identity. Nothing could ever cause you to search for significance when you know that you were created in his image and after his likeness.